To demonstrate geofencing monitoring in action, I put together a little program that simulates movement of a geopoint. This program I have here in the background, and all it does creates a geopoint with some metadata, and this metadata really is just some static values. I save this geopoint so it is saved in the geolocation storage, and then I set up a loop where every second, uh, as you can see right here, every second I obtain specific coordinates that I have in an array to simulate the movement. The program obtains these coordinates, sets the latitude and longitude to the location, and then saves this location in the geolocation storage. So let me run this program. And as you can see, it starts updating its location. So we see this location updates in action. We can actually switch to the geo points. And as you can see right here, notice the latitude and longitude will, will be changing whenever I click the update. And let's actually see this geo point moving around on the map. So here we have Dallas Cowboys Stadium. And as I refresh the location, notice that the geo point is actually moving. So this is a simulation representing a movement of a vehicle, a person, or really anything that you might be tracking. So now that we know that this location is being updated in real time as we speak, because the program keeps updating the location, let's configure a few actions for the Texas Stadium geofence, namely whenever a geopoint crosses the boundary, meaning on enter, and then leaves that geofence. And the actions that we're going to configure will be uh, publishing a pop sub message because it's also going to be fairly visual and we can see published messages through the messaging tab. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the geofencing tab and then locate the Texas Stadium. So here's the Texas Stadium. For the on enter action, I'm going to select pop sub message. And I know that I'll be sending this message to the default channel. And the message body is going to be a message that publishes the type of the visitor that has entered that geofence. So since we know that the geopoint that we're publishing has the visitor type metadata, we're going to extract the value for that visitor type into the message body that is being sent into this channel. As a result, the message body is going to include visitor type key and then the actual value of the geopoint. And additionally, we're going to publish the timestamp of when that action has happened. So the pub sub message action is configured for on enter, and we're going to create exactly the same one for on exit. To do this, we're going to select pub sub message for on exit, enter the channel name, and configure the message body. Click save. Notice that we have actions for on enter and on exit. Uh, there is a little gear icon with a little check mark, which indicates that the action has been properly configured. Now notice, since we have actions, the is active column includes a toggle, and this toggle is currently off. What this toggle represents is the actual state of monitoring for this geofence. Whenever it's off, it is available for client-side monitoring, and I'll talk about it later. Whenever it's on, it means that the geofence is being monitored on the server side. So any location changes of geopoints in relationship to this geofence will be tracked by the backhandless servers. Whenever I click this toggle to turn it on, you will see a pop-up that essentially tells you that right now, backhandle is gonna start monitoring, and if you're sure, click OK. Now this geofence is being monitored by backendless for any movements of the geopoints. Also, for any geofence that is currently being monitored, there is a very handy checkbox right here that says display geopoints and current geofence. If I select this checkbox, I can actually see any geopoints that are located inside this geofence. Currently, the refresh interval is set to 10 seconds, but I can click this refresh button and as you can see, there is a geopoint inside this geofence, which means that we had an event when it entered and left the geofence. So if we switch to messaging, now we have some messages that are published by backhandless indicating when geopoint is entering or exiting our geofence. So notice that the substitution from the metadata that is included in the geopoint has taken place and it says cowboy fan. And uh, the action type is either on enter or on exit. So at this point, 
if I were to take any other application that uses Backendless API and subscribe to my channel, I'm going to be receiving these messages notifying me that a geopoint has entered or left that specific geofence.